This video is uh, about a week and a half or so of uh, having the Holly uh, high ram <clears throat> running on a small block Chevy and driving it and uh, a couple of tips here and there of uh, using the um, Elder Brock Pro Flow 4 um, injectors and wiring harness and all that kind of stuff. Uh, just a couple little tips that I found when I was doing this um, and how I got around it. Um, but anyways, uh, as far as the drivability goes, it is excellent. <clears throat> I thought, you know, comparing it to the intake manifold and throttle body on the ProFlow 4 was, uh, you know, it's uh, it drives a lot better. It really does. Uh, seems to uh, come off the throttle a lot harder if you're not careful. Uh, it'll run over the guy in front of you. Um, this is only a street motor. So, you know, it's nothing, um, you know, high built. It's flat tappet cam motor. I've never really had a problem with flat tappet cams. It's got aluminum Brodax heads. Um, the cam's about a half an inch lift. Um, about 112, 113 on the LSA, and uh, <clears throat> it's 355 with the old THC uh, crank in it, and uh, forged rods, and Hypertech pistons, and um, flat tops are about 10 and a half to 1. I run it on premium. Um, I am running the 92 throttle body. I do have a 103. Uh, throttle body, but uh, I haven't tried it and It runs pretty good the way it is. So I'm gonna leave it alone I'm just gonna drive it and see how it works now um, So far it is not it is not failed to start number one number two start it right up on uh, first try when I uh, Put it all back together um, it uh, when it's been really cold up here, so every now and then I'll get a pop back through the carburetor if I try to, uh, you know, stab it to the floor cold. But other than that, once it's warmed up, uh, it uh, it stays. It doesn't pop or <clears throat> runs uh, oh quite a bit better than the. Um, the four barrel uh, 4150 style uh, ProFlow 4 intake and throttle body. I, I can't even believe that um, how good, you know, I expected something equivalent, maybe a little better, but it's beyond what I expected uh, on a small block Chevy. It really does uh, modernize a small block Chevy. <clears throat> now, for a couple little tips, now you got your, um, your, uh, uh, air valve here for your idle control air valve here and your um, throttle position sensor here and normally they were back here so uh, what I did is I got a lengthening cable off of Amazon or eBay I forget and lengthened a two footer which was just the right length to lengthen from the uh, IC to the to the uh, Elder Brock um, wiring harness. Now, uh, same thing with the uh, throttle body. It's normally like right here. So I bought a shortest one I could find was two foot, and I just cut it down to about oh eight nine inches, something like that. And then um, the air um, temperature sensor. I couldn't find a lengthening harness, so I just had to add those six inches to the one that was on the uh, the ProFlow 4 uh, wiring harness. Now the injectors, I think I mentioned this in another video, I put them on the other way because the way these Brodax valve covers are built, they go flush down, maybe even hang out a little more than a normal valve cover right here so the manifold wouldn't go on without smashing the injectors. So I was either going to have to get taller injectors, which I didn't want to do, <clears throat> and 
are um, turning around, which they just fit. I took the clip off that uh, that locks them on. I took it off, and now it's kind of locked between the injector. Still, it moves a little bit. Um, locked between the injector and the manifold. So that's how I solved that problem. Um, now the water neck, I went with the same type of water neck I had before with the uh, 20 AN um, hose. This one here though, I have um, a bypass from the back of the cylinder heads to uh, the water neck and uh, it doesn't go a tick over 180, maybe 182 and it's a 180 thermostat in there. Um, <clears throat> so that, um, that's another, uh, I don't know if you want to go to that expense, it gets pretty wild, you know, you start, you know, that's a $90 fitting, believe it or not, uh, only a couple people make it, so, uh, you pretty much got to pay up, now, um, it is, a dash eight, um, fuel rails where the uh, PF4 is a uh, dash 6 AN so I ran a dash 8 as my crossover with close 90s and uh, just went into the back with uh, AN6 so um, just used a dash 8 ORB to AN6 uh, reducer to uh, get down to the uh, pro flow 4 size and then um, the distributor is really tight, so you got a locker in there. Um, you're not going to get it on, get it in the slot on a, a OBS, a Chevy OBS, anyways, with the uh, the cap on. You're going to have to put drop your distributor, put your cap on. And I've mentioned this in other videos. One of the uh, tricks I use to uh, uh, drop the distributor in the right spot every time. It's just to go ahead and line it up on top dead center uh, Before I do anything first thing I do is put the mark on top dead center uh, With the rotor port towards number one and I don't touch it Then when I drop the distributor back in I drop it right back in where it was put the rotor right back to number one put the base to number one Timing mark still on number one, and uh, drop it right in. Lock it down. Snug, so you can still time it, uh, which was uh, it, with the ProFlow 4 system. Uh, even though I'm using a Holly gear, uh, it timed right up, went right into timing. And another thing on the OBS, if you have the... Uh, the high rise um, where the big air comp or the big AC compressor is sitting right here. Um, the uh, the belt tensioner is right in the way of opening up the Pro Flow Four, so you have to are opening up the Holly High Ram, so you have to you know do something else with your accessory drive. So I just bought a uh, Holly. Um, I've been looking for a reason to buy one. Just couldn't justify it because the uh, factory stuff worked. But uh, I've been looking for a reason to put on a Holly mid mount in the first place, uh, you know, with the more modern alternator and, and water pump and, and AC compressor, which the AC works fine, beautifully, just like it did before. The alternator is actually better. I had a. a Powermaster uh, 150 amp alternator on here when the fans kicked in the motor lugged down With this alternator when the fans kick in you don't even uh, you know other than the relay clicking You don't even realize they came on so um, uh, The more modern alternator doesn't drag the motor down near as much as the old uh, alternator did so um that's pretty much it uh, that I could recall on um, putting the, uh... now you're going to have, if you, you really don't want to try to mount this up on some TVI heads. They're, they're, there's a reason nobody makes an intake manifold for TVI heads. It's anything other than a TVI manifold. That There's a reason. Uh, think about it. Uh, you know, it's basically a, 450, 500 CFM uh, T 
two barrel uh, electronic carburetor, you might say. So, uh, you know, and I'll talk a little bit about the uh, the cruise control cable and the, and the um, cruise control and throttle. So, uh, the cruise control cable I bought used off of eBay. There's a guy in there who sells them. This is a 43 inch cable. I don't know what truck it would originally came on. Probably a 97 and newer. Um, 98 maybe, something like that. Maybe up to about, I don't know, 2006 or so. When the Vortec motors were being used. But this is he has them listed in length. So I bought a 43, which seems to work perfectly. And then this uh, throttle cable... I believe I punched in 2002 to 2006 and took a risk. So that's what that is. That's the 2002-2006 um, GM or, or Chevy Silverado, GMC Silverado for uh, uh, for a, a modern motor, an LS motor. So it seems to uh, fit right in. You know, making a bracket. The uh, the uh, cruise control cable is just the right length for the throttle cable. So the bracket bolts on here, and then these two holes here. And then I just I bought oh this piece here I bought off of eBay. It's the regular truck mount one. I just cut all the stuff that mounted it to the uh, to the manifold on the truck mount off of it and bolted it to this and I figured bolts would be better than welding it in case I ever need to move it I could uh, you know just drill some new holes just to cut a weld apart I don't think I'll ever need to move it but when I was building it I didn't know at the time so uh, that's how that worked out uh, as far as AC hoses um, one is a 10 one is an 8 AN they don't really call them ANs, they just call them 10 and 8. I'm going to put a 45 on here. I bought the tool, they were around 130 bucks. And I put a straight on there. That's a 10 straight, and then this is an 8 straight, this is our 845. Put that on there and then 45 it right back into, um, and this is the factory hose. So far it's not linking. leaking. It didn't, the, the, the smashing of it, the crimping, didn't turn out the greatest, but, uh, you know, for uh, just giving it a try myself. So this is the factory hose. I just cut them right off at the uh, factory connector that connected to the big uh, R5 uh, compressor and uh, crimped on those fittings uh, with some O-rings and tightened the heck out of them. Uh, one thing you'll have to do, I don't know, you'll have to check it out for yourself, but this uh, AC compressor requires one 12 volt signal. So you need 12 volts going to it, which is uh, going to your compressor. One is ground, one is 12 volts. Now you do have a low high switch on the back of your compressor. In order for it to work, you have to cut that low high switch off and wire those two wires together. I believe they're green. If I remember right. So you cut the little high switch off. And uh, wire those together. Now I left the resistor in. There is a resistor in the line. That goes from the 12 volt to ground. Or it's a diode. Diode I left in. Now the reason GM put that diode in there. From what I could uh, remember. And uh, kind of try to catch myself up on it. Was to stop. Uh the magnetic um, current from backflowing into the uh, the control module for the AC. So I guess they were having problems with the uh, magnetic interference from the, um, you know, because it's got a magnetic clutch on it, flowing back through the 12 volt, ending up in the um, controller and causing it to have problems. So I left it in. Seems to work fine. It's winter time though. I haven't run it for much more than about 10, 15 minutes, you know. So I don't know. It seems to be fine. Thanks for watching.